This week's episode is sponsored by Change. Change is the number one mentoring program that teaches you e-commerce from scratch. Change has a real community with real results. I have been working with Ryan for many years now and have attended many of his events and retreats across the world and got to meet members and the amazing community of like-minded people. Ryan works with a lot of big names in the business world, helping them build online businesses and e-commerce. Change offers personal one-on-one support, no experience needed, but like anything, this takes time and is not a get-rich-quick scheme. If you put the work in, you will get the results. E-commerce and online shopping is getting bigger and bigger. This is a great opportunity for anyone that is looking for financial freedom. For more information, go follow Ryan on Instagram at RyanJB and he will guide you through the steps to help you get started and build a successful online business. You can now follow me on all my social media platforms to find out who my latest guest will be. And don't forget to click the subscribe button and the notifications bell so you are notified for when my next podcast goes live. And then we're on. And today's guest, we've got Marvin Herbert back. Marv, how are we? Yeah, good, good, good. The I always, I'm going to get a Lord. I'm going to be Lord Marvin Herbert eventually. So yeah, the Marvin Herbert, distinguished, will be coming distinguished. Back again, flicking his moustache, got the eye out and everything. Yeah, and do you know what? It's not... <clears throat> it's more about my comfort than anything else. Do you know what I mean? Like, When I have the eye in, it hurts and it's irritating. And I don't see why I've got to go through that every day, all day. So every now and then I'll take it out. And I actually forgot I had it out, to be fair. <laughs> I promise you, I forgot <laughs> I had it out. So, yeah, yeah I do. But for your lifestyle, everybody knew, kind of underworld, very well known, all over Europe done a lot of bad stuff we've done the first podcast explosive millions of views and all platforms how's life been since then let's obviously people know i go back to the start but i've had john three times before <coughs> this is your fourth time we've always had a strong bond strong friendship never been broken never spoke shit about each other but since that podcast how has it changed everything it has everything like right? <clears throat> it's sort of I'm a great believer in the universal energies and forces and all my mates used to think I was crazy when I was a kid talking about the feelings and the emotions and things like that yeah I'm not feeling what I do I'm not feeling what I do that and because I'm believe I'm destined to do what it is I'm doing now everything that's happened since coming on your platform i've actually looked at him for wow look at that and it was when we first done your first james english i never expected what we got so i mean i didn't think i'd be in the public eye as much like i didn't think it'd go that far i, I didn't think i'd be where i am today if that makes sense um i knew i was turning my life around however coming on the james english was i believe the catalyst to my growth. Without that, I couldn't be where I am today, if that makes sense. It might, I might have got there eventually, but never in the short space of time that I've done it. So I do appreciate that. Because yeah, it's, it's, it is, it's, it's good energy. And that's what people got to appreciate more than anything. It's not ego, it's energy. And when we come together, when we talk, I'm displaying a, a period of reality do you understand? So my reality is X, Y, Z. This is what's happening. And the chemistry between you and I gives me the emotional space to be me without trying to fit in. Because the reason why I love the podcast is because I can be me 
and have to worry about nothing. Sometimes you go on some podcast and you can't talk about certain things or you can't act a certain way and there's always a a protocol. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I like being on James English. We can talk. It's How nice. has it been the, to make the transition? How difficult is it? Because changes, for me, I always talk about it, but it's one of the hardest things to ever do. It's 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 not impossible because many people do it, but it is very difficult and that's why not many people actually do do it. Well, it, I can honestly say, James, <clears throat> it has been the most difficult thing I've ever had to do. Like, the most challenging. Re like, even getting emotional now. <sighs> it's the amount of... Like, I've always been a giver to my family yeah, and all my kids and everything, but it's not being able to give. <sighs> it's not being able to be the person that you're loved for being, if that makes sense. Like, when, like, I, I'm not saying, like, all my kids, I had a wicked Father's Day, you couldn't imagine, it was sick. I had a wicked surprise. My oldest daughter flew back from Dubai. <sighs> so, my oldest daughter flew back from Dubai. Um, I didn't know she was coming back, so it was a bit of a surprise Father's Day for my son and my daughter. And the only one that wasn't there was young Sloan, who was in boarding school. Big up Sloan, because he's flying the kite for the year. But I mean, like she's doing amazingly well. And uh, unfortunately, she we, they couldn't pick her up because it's like a six hour journey, do you know what I mean? So we had, apart from Sloan, it was the best. One of the best. And now uh, it's, uh, it's just learning to cope with the liquid financial abilities to provide your kids with what they desire sort of thing. And that's been the hardest thing to deal with. But I do know that being in prison, you can't give them anything. And I know because of the network I've got and the people that I'm, I'm around and the things we're developing, we're not going to fail. We can't fail. And that's why HMP has started on this project for helping the youngsters involved in football, boxing, music, media, and their construction. And like, we're at it, we're in it. We've got two or three people that are working for the company that are already in prison. We've had one, two guys work through our, their parole to get released, to go off and set up um, their own companies and things like that, do you know what I mean? So there's lots of things that we have done and there's lots of things that we are doing. It's crazy because when you're in a life of crime and you're making money, you think because you're providing for your kids in a materialistic way, you'll get more love. But then when you make changes and you do things, just being in their presence without the materialistic things as being a true dad and has shown true love, in my own opinion. And we get the two confused sometimes because we think giving our kids everything that we never had makes us a better parent. But being in their presence, learning from your mistakes and trying to teach them about the world because it's a tough place out there and being in a presence is better than anything so no matter what position you are financially in life just being around your kids makes you a fucking great dad in anybody's eyes anybody who is a father anyway do you regret a lot of missed time Marv with your family? Do I regret it? Well this is the beautiful thing about now the beautiful thing about now is because my eldest kids can relate to my youngest kids that it's not worth it. So when my younger kids might want something that I can't get them, so I mean, they'll be getting spoken to by their older ones and saying, well, look, to be quite fair, you're better off with your dad because I grew, grew up without him being there. And if he has to go back to a crime, then he's not going to be here for you. So they've got that safety net. So I don't, I can't be pushed into crime now because the only reason I've done crime was to provide my kids with a better living and existence than I had. And although their existence was created whilst I was in the criminal fraternity, I was deluded, I was insane, I was off my nut. So I'm saying to so learning how to navigate myself away from that same mindset of criminal behavior and now bringing the kids up learning from my mistakes is something that I'm really grateful for. We'll promote your show in the Edinburgh Fringes now as well. Where can people buy tickets and what dates are you there? I forgot um, to do that at the start. 
the the twelfth, the twelfth to the sixteenth of August, and it's um, the Sea Arts or the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. Like it's all it's all the official Fringe Festival. So go on my bio on Instagram, Mr Herbert, Mr Marvin Herbert. Yeah. Is it? I can't remember what it is. Mr. Marvin Herbert, yeah. Yeah, people can link your Instagram yeah, yeah, and stuff. Yeah, it's all that. Anyway. All that all that's there's 104 followers on my Instagram, so that's the original one. Um, 104,000? Yeah, now it's gone up to 104,000. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. Man, I remember you first started, you only had like 600 people. Yeah. It's mad, isn't it? How's, what's the hardest thing about the last four years, Marv? About getting through this transition? Because this social media world, so it's, like, a, it's a mad world. The hardest thing... If I'm being honest, was not getting angry. That's been the hardest thing. I mean, like I've not become a recluse, but to manage my emotions, I've had to really navigate myself through some self-learning processes of managing my limbic system, you know what I'm saying? And it's learning how to understand my triggers. And that's what <clears throat> I'm grateful for you for, because that put me on a journey, which put me in the public eye, which reinforced the fact that I had to continue doing what I set out to do, if that makes sense. So I'll never fail, I don't flop, I don't give up. So I started saying I've got to finish it. And now it's about, the true transition of my ex entity, which is far beyond this mortal material yeah. madness. I mean, it's a more of a, I'm all on a spiritual journey at the minute now. You've still had the same cup for the last fucking four years anyway. Why have you not changed that? Because, like I say to everybody, the one thing they've created in society is minimal bacteria. Right? So everybody gets ill when they want you to get ill, when they release a certain toxin, everyone gets ill because you've got no bacteria. We are 13 billion, 700 years of bacteria. That's all we are is bacteria. We're made up of bacteria. Everything around us is bacteria. Bacteria keeps the ecosystem flowing. So when you're getting ill, it's because you haven't got the right bacteria in your system to fight it. So you're affected by it. So this just helps create all the right bacteria, and, uh, Keeps me sane, fit and healthy, able to do 26-hour circuits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Obviously, in this industry, when you're coming from that background of violence and ready to kill, ready to die mentality, and then you've got ball bags kind of talk shit, including, listen, I love shit. there's talk shit about me, Marvin. Yeah, come on, we but love them. We don't respond. They're just not on my level, not on my frequency. And sometimes people think you're a dickhead because you don't respond, but you've All got I'm to saying, be laughable. All I'm saying is this, yeah. Come and get involved in a 26-hour circuit. See how long you can go for, that's it. Because I'm just doing 26-hour circuits. And that's it. I'm not interested in what anyone else is doing, what anyone else is saying. All I'm interested in doing, yeah, is creating a platform for young, like-minded individuals like myself, like I used to be, offering them an opportunity to vent, use that aggression in a positive way rather than a negative way. So these circuits, I'm going 26 cities, 26 months, 20, 26 cities in 26 months, yeah, for 26 hours, yeah? Now, due to a couple of hiccups in the corporate world, things happened, things got postponed, things got overlooked, and we had to miss a day because we had one of our young athletes um, died on his pro debut. Imagine that. Yeah, young Cherie died. So that's why we've been put on hold. Sharif, not Sharif, Sharif. Um, so we put things on hold for a month. We're coming back this month for the 26 hour circuit. So the 26 hour circuit is something that I put together. It's non stop and uh, it helps me deal with all life challenges, I imagine, emotionally. Right, it just puts me in a good place. And then you spend all month recovering. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? And then stretch, do a few exercises. 
Do you think that takes away your pain when you exercise? Yeah. Yeah. It's not <clears throat> focusing on the pain is what makes pain. Do you know what I mean? Like pain is only something that's man made. Pain's like an indicated pain. Like it's especially psychological pain. Like it it exists because you want it to. This episode is sponsored by Fire Away Pizza, the fastest growing pizza company in the UK with over 150 stores. With their fresh quality ingredients and unique pizzas, they will have you coming back for more. Use code JAMES20 for 20% off. That's JAMES20 for 20% off. I mean, like, there's avenues and there's processes to deal with anything. However, unless you're prepared to be accountable and honest with yourself, then you're never going to heal. And 98% of people have to be accountable with themselves because they're not. And that's what made me, I believe, different for most people because I'm accountable for who I am and who I was. Do you know what I mean? Like, and I'll tell you straight, if you're in it, you're in it. And if you do something wrong, then you're going to get hurt, mate. Or you, you're going to get this or you're going to get that. Like, so when I was in the world, I lived that world with the utmost of integrity which got me where i got to where i didn't want to be if that makes sense and now i've turned a new leaf over i've started to learn how to use my god-given skills to communicate how have you dealt with it though like when coming through the social media world getting attention people stopping for photos yeah all that, i love all that because i was i was always the attention seeker anyway but i've done it in the criminal world i just wanted everyone to know i was a villain that's it. You know I'm a villain. I'm here. I'm in the gaff. I'm here. I'm the biggest, baddest fucking dickhead about. That's what I used to be. So I mean, I should turn up wanted to be the guy. So I turned up and I challenged everything in my wake. And that was it. That was the person I was. I just wanted to be the biggest, baddest nutcase on the planet. Eagle stroking in it. it yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, I just thought, you know what is, and it's coming from the 70s and the 80s, yeah, what a lot of people don't realise is a lot of villains older than me were sexually abused. And all the care homes, all the kids' homes, all these sort of environments for the naughty kids to be getting sent to, everyone was getting nonced. And it was our generation that sort of fought back because I'd cut them, I'd stab them, I'd beat them. Like, if you touch me in a place that I didn't like, or try to grab me, like, if you grab me in a certain place, mate, I'd stab you, like, I only had little pen knives and forks and things like that, but all my teachers, care workers, they all got hurt with something, jumps you know like, and I think we were the generation that stopped being nonced, if that makes sense, because mm -hmm. I got booted out of my care homes, do you know what I mean? I got transferred to Wales, Penreef, do you know what I mean? They even took, took me off my mum for being an uncontrollable child. And after 18 months, said to me, do you want to go back to your mum's? I was like, yeah, of course I do. He said, go on then, mate. Just don't let no one know. And just come back every week to sign his register. Do you understand? So I've understood my transition to where I am today. And I've been going through my healing process in the periods that people ain't seen me. So although... People think I haven't been doing a lot. I've been healing myself. Like, bar Sloan being in boarding school, I had one of the best um, Father's Day I've had yet. The best one was when all my kids was together. This is the second best now. Do you know what I mean? So we're, the, the kids are going out of their way for their dad. Do you know what I mean? Like, they're going out of their way for their dad. dad. They love their dad. Like, they're putting things together behind my back. So that's a beautiful thing. That I thought I'd never see. Were you always emotional, Marv? Um, yeah, but anything that would have made me cry made me want to kill. It's weird. So I was very, if I felt sorry for you, and I think, oh, and I'd, I'd want to kill for you then, that's weird. It was just a mad, like, I, I couldn't cry, but I'd kill. I'd stab, I'd shoot, I'd do this. Fuck them. I don't like that. I don't like feeling that way. Do you know what I mean? And that just made me that person in that world. Because everything I ever done and every ag I ever had 
was over somebody else. I've never had a problem with me being me. It's always fighting somebody else's battles. Do you know what I mean? Standing up for someone else who somebody's took a liberty with. But that becomes draining then, and that try to protect everybody else when it's your own. It's your when own you, see, when you're in it, see, when I was in it, it didn't matter to me because I was earning. I was earning. And if you took a liberty with someone and I got involved, then you're paying. Simple. So it gets flipped on you, you bully cunt. Do you know what I mean? And I'll put it on you and I'll terrorise you and I'll take your cars and I'll take your ass, you take your jewelry, take your money, take your guy. Because you're the bully. That was who I was. Do you know what I'm saying? And that was why I got shot five times. That's why I became the person I was. That's why I was in Spain. That's why I went through Europe. That's why I committed offences that I'm embarrassed about. That's why I was investigated for things that I never thought would be possible. And now we're here. So Why do you think you're alive now, still? Because of my integrity. And I believe mankind needs to learn a little bit about integrity. And from where I've come from and the circles, I think the universe has got a plan. So I think it's, you know when they say tough times create great men, great men create great times, great times, great weak people. Or you know, that, that mad little thing, man. I think we're gonna be ready in the next few years because they're gonna need real men about. They're gonna need real men about. And I think we're the ones that are put in place now to get these real men ready. Because all this madness is going on within society, like it's a lot of confusion going on with the youngsters. There's a lot of detached realities going on with the youngsters. There's a lot of belief. It's like a, attention-seeking culture. Social media, though. It's, mate, it's just an attention-seeking culture. Like, women are more interested in likes on social media than feeding their kids. <laughs> it's crazy. And then they try yeah. hiding behind, oh, I'm making money. on. Well, maybe a percentage of them are making money. But I do know what has to go into making money on these platforms. And <laughs> it ain't easy. So people that tell me they're making money, I say, okay, who are you working with? When they say nobody, then you think, well, you can't. It don't work unless you have your frameworks. Mm -hmm. You need your frameworks or you can't grow. And uh, yeah, you'll always be faced with challenging, angry people that have opinions, but don't let them sway your journey, man. Like all the noises for people, for people's sake in it, so. Yeah. I don't let them bother me, man. I'm just more focused on achieving my goals. Because over the last four years, when we met, you stayed in a big house, drive, drove the big car. Now you're staying in a porter cabin. Like people are saying, you're homeless, you're this and that. Like, what's I the love truth it. behind it all? No, see, 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 see. I love it because, well, to have what I've never had, what to have what I've never had. Yeah, I've got to go where I've never been. Yeah. Now I can sit and honestly say. Bar a day or two, bar a day or two, I've never been skint in my life. Bar a day or two, yeah? And there's been a couple of people in my life that have bailed me out when I've been in trouble on two or three occasions throughout my whole life. But I've always been a go-getter and I've never been skint. So to go to the next level of frequency I need to do things I've never done. I've never been skinned because I would never allow it. I would never allow it. Never allow it. Like, even my kids know. If you say to my kids, any of my kids, how much do your dad have in his wallet? They will all have a certain figure. Do you know what I mean? Because when I was growing up, there was no less than 500 pounds in my wallet every single day. And although it's not a lot of money, try to keep 500 pounds in your wallet every day for three years. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what I said to anybody. If you don't think it's hard, do it. Do you know what I mean? And live the life. Go all around the world. Travel first class. Tra do you know what I mean? Drive the biggest whips. Have the biggest watches. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's all nonsense. But you do it because of your ego. It's the status as well. Sometimes I can fall into that trap, but I know and understand it's all bullshit. And it's, it's not bullshit. why I wake up in the morning. When we spoke before the very first podcast, the one thing that did upset you was... The fact when you were shot in hospital and all the good deeds that you'd done for the other criminals, well, not good deeds, you try to help them out, but no one showed up for you. Why does that still hurt you? Um, you know what, it's not. 
ironically enough, James, it wasn't the criminals. <laughs> Was it not? Nah, nah. The criminals are always going to be criminals. They're all scumbags. I know that. Always was, always will be. It's the people that I stood up for. They're the people that never come. All the people I stood up for. All the people I stood up for. All the people I got stabbed up for, beaten for, went to prison for. They never come. But the people that I nicked money with and built with and grew with, they all come. My team's come but not the people that are protected. And that's gone out here for the first time, so now you all know. Do you know what I mean? And that's what really upset me more than anything. All the people that I'd sacrificed for, and some of these people are doing really, 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 really well. And they are doing really well. Do you know what I mean? And they couldn't even pop over and see me or contribute to anything, just disappeared. And I thought, wow, look at that. So that's why I'm glad that going through this journey and living in a portal cabin keeps all the mugs away, keeps all the beggars away, keep all the parasites away, keep all the thieves' ponces away. Why do you have, why do you want to hang about me when I'm skint? Simple. So now what's growing is organic. And when we get there, they're all going to be saying, shit, shoulda, woulda, coulda. I mean, that's all that's going to happen because I don't fail. When do you think you see humans when you're at your strongest or at your weakest? When do you think you see people for who they really are? When you're at your weakest. When you're your most vulnerable. That's the only way you'll see someone. That's why I'm glad I'm here, so I can see everybody. They will show me, because when you're at your lowest, yeah, people assume you're fucked. But what they're failing to appreciate with me, James, is I'm actually choosing to do this the right way. And I ain't gonna fail. I'm getting businesses through me ass. Like they come in like 5%, remember, my businesses, my strategies is I'm having 5% of every company that I add value to. That's gonna be my game plan. And prior to that, I'm gonna be building a social corporate enterprise to help the youngsters steer themselves away from crime. HMP, who are Marvin Herbert, <laughs> HM Projects, Herbert Marvin Projects, and it's nonstop. And that's all we'll be doing. And music, football, boxing, and construction. How important is boxing for people? Like some sort of self-defense classes all of it, or some sort of right, this combat is sports? Any sport, right? This is what pees me with society. We were designed to be hunter-gatherers, to be out there running around like lunatics, yeah? Gathering and killing and catching, chasing all day, for days sometimes, for weeks. Going out as firms to go hunting for the fun. Do you know what I mean? Coming home fit as a fiddle. You eat good food. Now nah, everybody's just got all this convenience. So no one's hunting. Everyone's getting ill. Their bodies are reacting negatively to what they're putting in. All the sugars, all the acids, all the red meat, all the animal products, all the dairy, all the sugar. It's all filth. So I don't have none of that. So my new communities are going to be dairy, red meat, and sugar free. And we're going to show people how successful you can become with dairy, red meat, and sugar-free society. Well, we're going to have a small community and hopefully it will ripple out into society. How's the underworld treated you, the people who you used to work with, to the stuff that you're doing now? What do you mean, treated me? No, like, obviously when people change, people kind of get funny when people come away from that. I'm telling the truth. What can they say? I'm telling the truth. Everyone knows the truth. What are they going to do? Oh, Marv, what are you telling the truth for? Everyone... The, now, the people at the highest level all want out. The people at the lowest level want to get enough money to get out. Simple. I'm just brave enough to walk away from it. People are not brave enough to be alone. Yeah, that's the difference. If you, unless you're prepared to be on your own, you can't give it up, can you? And that was my unique skill. I love being on my own. I love proving people wrong. What better way to do it? What better way to do it than kick the rug out from underneath my feet, take away every asset, every financial revenue stream that I could even consider using. I say, let's see how well you get on. And I can guarantee you this now as I sit here telling no lie, yeah? I will guarantee I've ate the best food for the last two years than anybody's ever ate who's watching. And I don't think anybody's ate as clean and as nice as me. 
and it ain't been cheap. Do you know what I mean? But I've had enough money to eat, pay for school fees, and pay for my electric to keep me warm. Do you know what I mean? What electrics have you got? Have you got a generator or what? No, just for the lights and yeah, no, nah, I'm kind of living in a way that caveman stuff. Meant to be, yeah. <laughs> you know what it is? I went up to do the, the North Sea swim as well, up in Newcastle. When? Um, two months ago. So my pals do it up there. Um, and I've been up there. I've got 14 minutes in. So I got in for 14 minutes. But I never got my head under. I just got up to my neck, screaming very aggressively. But yeah. That's it. Because from the first podcast to now, you can see the transition. You can see the calmness because you were, ah, fucking this. Ah. And I love that, mate, because that brings views for me. That brings, that's a great podcast. But I'm also about the change, the growth, and people who do change. Now, it's been a long time coming. This is a, you, out of 500 guests, you've been on the most. This is the fourth time. Yeah. And, you've and, been there, on and the there'll most. be more because what you'll be able to demonstrate through what we do, yeah, or what we've done is the possible in change this is all possible now no one would ever believe that i'm going to get to where i'm going no one <laughs> and they won't people be how the fuck do you know what he's all about like it's going to be unbelievable i'll be very surprised if i'm not within the systems that are running shit within the next 20 years so, i mean because i'm still young i'm it's only 52 so i mean so i'll be in the systems by the time i'm 70 and my kids then will go on. Um, my daughter's a middle class, all posh and hello, daddy. Daddy, daddy. The other ones. Yeah, all my kids are sick. Do you know what I'm saying? And they're all our individual characters of perfection. Now, they've all got their little flaws, but they're all sick. And to me, they're all perfect and they're all accountable. That's what I like about my kids. I mean, they're all accountable. And they tell me off as well, especially Barley. Yeah, it's sick. Sick. How many kids you got, man? Five. However, the youngest boy died last year in um, May last year. Young Kane. That was a... Uh, it was more of a... For me, it was what rubber stamped, sort of cemented the being nice. Do you know that? Like, to be nice to people, because that's what my son was. He was a lovely kid that was just nice to everyone. And he just wanted everybody to get on. And I think, I've just took a little bit of that away. And I've just been a nicer person. And this is, I've just been nicer. I've tried to, I've tried to be more of, I've tried to be more of the man that he was, if that makes sense. You know, I've tried to be more of the man that he was. And, it's been nice because the sun has been on my skin every day since his passing. How do you get over that, Marv? Well, you you, you don't, don't ever get over that, do you? Don't, mate. You know what? You sort of learn. You sort of learn to deal with it. You learn to deal with it. And it's like life is a, a lesson to learn. And every scenario, every situation, you've got to learn from what you go through. So we've all had to learn from this. And what it has done, I believe, is just, it brought us all closer together. Although there's a lot of turbulence, energy and emotion-wise, it's brought us all a little bit closer together where there's no excuses not to talk. There's no excuses not to communicate like, we're all valuing life a little bit more than we did, I believe. And everybody's just become a little bit more friendly. Like, yeah, there's no, there's not as much hostility within the family household now when having two baby mums and two sets of kids, 
could have caused a lot of problems and issues and dramas, but it isn't. It hasn't, and everybody's getting on really well. So, yeah, life's good with the family. All the family's pretty well, apart from the loss of Kane. It's mad though, something so dark and heartbreaking it takes to then realise that life is too short. It's a shame it happened and you can't ever, words don't do justice for that, really don't. However, you've got to look at it as, I don't know, it's more ingredients to get through more life. It's just life and it's the game of life. And we've all got to experience these losses. We've all got to experience these traumas. We've all got to experience these changes. And it's just how you come out as a team and being the man and the alpha, I'm responsible for my team and the team is the family. And hopefully everyone will come together a lot better than we have been and end a, a journey that's insurmountable and show people how you can do it because there was a lot of conflict, a lot of turbulence in my relationships. And uh, I created a lot of bad energy. Obviously the world I lived in, the choices I made, I broke some hearts and took some liberties. And now we've gone through life and we've learned. And I think we're getting better now. And it's just what I said, it's all healing. Everything I'm doing now is just all healing. And I don't mind it. I'm accountable for where I've been and what I've done. And I can accept the healing. And I know it's going to be harder because we've got one more stage to go through. Could the loss of your son push you over the edge to go the other way, Marv? Or were you too strong and too set in your ways to then give you the reasons to then keep going on the straight path? I think the way he died made it more acceptable. I honestly couldn't. I wouldn't like to be in a position to answer the question if someone killed my son, what would I do? Do you know what I'm saying? Because you don't know. You can't answer that. You can't answer that. I'd like to believe I'd ring the police. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> That's why I'd like to believe I'd ring the police if someone killed my son, but you just don't know. That's what I'm thinking you, you dread. So losing my son in unfortunate circumstances that we did was bearable, better than any other sort of scenario. Because some, if someone had done something to my son, then you'd have that emotion where you have to do something. So... That's the one thing I'm glad we didn't have to face. Do you know what I mean? So there's lots of contributing factors which has allowed the healing of his passing to be more palatable, if that makes sense, because it could have been a lot worse. A lot worse for him, worse for everybody. Do you know what I mean? Because who knows? Who knows what you do, how you react and how you behave when bad things happen. It's, that's the test, isn't it? So hopefully, fingers crossed, things will never transpire in that way where someone would want to kill my kids. Do you know what I mean? Or do something to my kids where I'd be challenged. I don't know. I'd rather not think about it. I believe all my kids are going to live a very healthy life. I think they're all going to live beyond the age of 80. Do you know what I mean? I don't believe they're going to have much more trauma in their lives to deal with. I think I've done through that. As long as they will learn from what I've been through, then they will do what was necessary from the universe, I'd imagine. Why do you think you've been through so much trauma from the day you're born to even now? It's always... Because I can't deal with it. <laughs> Simple, isn't it? Like, I get emotional now because it is hurt. Like, what I've been through has hurt. <sighs> But that's why it was me. Because I don't think, <laughs> I don't think there'd be many people that can sit and face adversity and smile as much as I have. Do you know what I mean? So I think the purpose for my life was for what I'm doing now. 
If there ain't a young kid that can come into my company, yeah, that could have an argument with me on why his life should be going the way he wants it to go on the criminal fraternity, in the criminal fraternity, the only one thing that I cannot sort of empathise with or even understand is like being sexually abused. I've never been sexually abused, so I don't know how I'd react. Hence the reason why sometimes on social media people say things, people do things, but people have been really traumatised in life and it's about healing. People have to heal and I don't know if I could ever heal if someone raped me. So I give people a lot of space and time to heal for themselves. I let everybody heal. I'm just glad I was never raped because the trauma I've dealt with has been mad enough, crazy enough and tangible enough to deal with. Whereas having it taken out of your hands and put into the penis of somebody else rammed into you time and time again, I don't know how I'd feel. So hurt people hurt people and all they'll ever try to do is hurt people. So I'm not here to hurt no one. All I want to do is add value to anybody that wants to move forward in the most constructive, positive, harmonious way possible. And my heart goes out to all the people out there that have been sexually abused because that's the one thing I don't know if I'll be able to handle. Yeah, there's a lot of people in pain. There's a lot of people suffering. and That's why I can't even be bothered with anybody. I'm just focused on me, my family, and where we're going and what we got to do. And the ripple effect of positive persuasion of help, support, and nutrients. And that's it. Like, mm. success leaves clues. Over the last six years where this podcast has took me is unbelievable. I've travelled the world. I know. The people that I've met, my contact list would blow people's mind, Marv. I'm not a show-off, even though people have think I'm. Listen, I've got a bit of ego, and listen, I'm not a fucking dickhead, but I do, what I, I do what's right for me. I found my lane, stuck to it, and never broke or bent for fucking no one. You know what you got to do now, though? you got to come and do a day in my service. <laughs> <laughs> that might send me back in the gear, man. I've ended up back in there. <laughs> you got to get the recipe. Right, what I'll tell everybody is this. It's only a recipe. Right, now. It's five exercises. That's all it is. Five exercises. Now, you do the five exercises how you want to do them, but you just got to push yourself. And it's just five exercises. That's all it is. And you can do it with the weight you want to do it with, and then you just add weight every time you do it. And then you'll become a master of it. And once you become a master of it, you'll have the sickest body that you can ever imagine. Like, my body's unbelievable. I've, I've got a body like a racehorse. Like, there's no body fat on me. Like, I'm not skinny. Like, I'm 85 kilos. Do you know what I'm saying, Chuck? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 85 fucking kilos. 100 or something. Yeah, yeah, about something. I'm lean. I'm, doing like a I'm fucking... lean. I'm lean with no sugar, no body fat. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, come winter, you'll see me. I'm going to hibernate for the winter because next I've got to be... 15 stone for what next year for what for developing right because everyone keeps saying oh, you're skinny skinny skinny, are you skinny skinny no it's not i'm skinny what i'm doing is i'm creating a muscle structure yeah once the muscle structure is fixed because my 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 vitality cuff's damaged so Everything's got to be done in a certain way so your body can be perfect. And once it's perfect, I'm going to go back up to 15 and a half stone. And then I'll just be 15 and a half stone of just ripped muscle. What weight were you when you first done the podcast? Maybe 14, 15 stone, innit? I will not I was just coming out of the world then, innit? I was literally, what year was that? 215 or 216 or something like that? No, fuck my, if it's 224, you're talking 220 maybe? 219, 220? Four or five years ago? Really? Yeah. I've been doing this, what, six years, seven years? So... Maybe five years ago, so 219, 220 at the most. It was lockdown. Yeah. 220. Just after lockdown, yeah. yeah. But that's when I was... 2017 is when I exited the criminal fraternity. So then it would have been built up to that, because I was 2018, 19, I went down in the street. So it would have been after that then, yeah. So I'm saying it's just... It's just lost on me now, the, like the timing. It's just weird. It's just all stages how do you feel now everybody's got podcasts everybody's trying to have you on and they kind of going through the same going around the same circle do you know no, how you're talking the same shit no because it, it, it changes from cast to cast you know what i mean like it's not you know who wants you on for the shit so i don't go on for the shit i'm not really 
people want to get clickbait and all that sort of carry on, but I'm here to spread a positive message. Like, that's what my purpose is. That's why I can go through all the shit I've been through because I'm strong enough to do what's necessary. Do you know what I mean? Like, I'm not getting, I'm not getting hoodwinked and slide slipped and dragged this way, dragged that way. I'm not getting done by, I'm not getting manipulated by money, drugs, sex, or anything materialistic. It can't sway me. Nothing can sway me. I could never be brought in the game and I'll never be brought out of it. So I'm doing what I'm doing to make a positive change within society because society's fucked. Why do you think it's struggling in the new society as a whole? Because it's going on a, 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 a sick agenda. It's, it's just a sick agenda. Like, people need to wake up and be honest with themselves. Like, the world that we're living in now is just... I think, spiritually, it's it's more confused than it's ever been. Physically, I think everybody's more confused than they've ever been. And materialistically, no one knows what they want. No one knows what life's all about. Everybody just wants, everybody wants what I wanted as a kid. The fast car, the big ass and the holidays. Like, it's weird. There's no infrastructure to life anymore. It's just quick, instant gratification. Let's go here, let's do this, let's get, everyone's getting, thinks they're gonna get rich instantly off social media. Now with the AI, people don't realize what they're shopping, they don't realize what they've sold themselves. They've sold their souls for AI, convenience, all that, and it's all gonna go pear-shaped. Yeah, but everything's controlled, man, the weather, the food's all spread. Every uh, social all, media is manipulating the mindset. That's why we're creating new world orders now. The Urban Marvin Project. We're going to be doing fruit and veg, fitness, health, all that. And I do it. I'm fasting now. I've been fasting two days. So I'm saying I ain't eat nothing for two days. Now all I do is have a grimy bit of juice out of my grimy cup. <laughs> Man, that cup's fucking disgusting, mate. I'm not going to sit here and bullshit you, bro. Uh, Fair you play to you, mate. It's disgusting, but it gives me the nutrients I need. Do you know what I mean? Like, people don't realise you need bacteria yeah, or you get ill. you that, man. I never get ill. Playing in that. I don't get ill. I ain't been ill. I got the symptoms of the first COVID, yeah, and I couldn't move for three days, but that's that's the last time I was ill. I got the symptoms of COVID. I, was, I just couldn't move for three days. When I first started, I got ended up skin broke in a porter cabin, right? And I got the footage just before, anyway. It was a film director that wanted to interview me and he come over from Sweden. And then I went to Sweden and done a, a course for someone's um, in the Swedish University of Film. So I'd done a program over there a couple of years ago. So when I've gone over there, so I'm sick on the floor in the port cabin. I couldn't move, but we got that footage. And that was the first week of my transition into this world because I've been robbed, I've been scammed. And I was skinned, been evicted, I had no money, no car. The car got repossessed and I got nowhere to live. And I said to my mate, mate, I've got nowhere to live. He said, I've got a portal cabin in the, in the yard. You can stay there. And I was in there on a blow up, blow up. Um, Bed? Yeah, blow up mattress. That was it. <laughs> Just a blow up mattress. John Adair's mum, Mary, give me a blow up mattress. Big up, John. There's another one. There's another one. Sick. Tracy's treasure. They've started that. And TN TNM Homes. TNM Funerals, I think it is. TNM Funerals and Tracy's Treasure. Two companies me pal set up coming out of jail. Like, that's what I'm saying. We're setting up companies and building businesses from nothing and making good steady income like and you don't need to commit crime. Like there's things I've seen people do in a couple of years. Like what's what I'm gonna do next year? When you come and set the car for the yard, right? And then you're gonna get before, and then you're gonna come down in six months' time and you're gonna think, wow, like we've got plans, isn't it? Level. I hope you do. You know I'm always rooting for you, you know I've always have your back, you know I've always support everything I've done, you've support. Remember my boxing event in Manchester you supported? Come on. Right up, mate. Sick. That's scary, that fucking shit, mate. No, that's, it, that's, how, that's why you need to get my ingredients because it won't be scary after you do my Doesn't surface. matter who you are, mate. I know I've got balls, but I don't know they thought I was the underdog because this cunt was massive. He was massive, wasn't he, Marv? Yeah, good night. Fucking tiring, bro. 
And that's the thing. You've got to pace yourself. You've got to learn how to pace yourself. Ner you're nervous, man. You're there for six hours. And my fucking ring entrance was seven minutes as well, man. I was told to have the cunt waiting in the ring. So the time I got the ring, I was fucked. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good experience, I mean. Yeah, I loved it, man. But yeah, everything you've done, like you say, why do you think we've always kept a strong bond four or five years? Honesty. Just being honest. There's no agendas, is there? Like your platform is to get information out there. And my math is the vehicle with information. So it's a hand in glove situation, and it's I don't what I've found is people care how you're living. People care what you've got. People care how you're growing. People care. It hurts them to get it. So they have to do and say things in it. So your success doesn't bother me. Your growth doesn't bother me. Your your life doesn't affect me because you're James English, you're you. I'm happy for you and what you create for your family. Without you, I may not even be where I am today. Who am I to get angry with you becoming a multi-millionaire, multi-billionaire, multi-trillionaire? I'll be happy for you. Good. I know I'm in that wake, so I'll be not far behind somewhere doing something, do you know what I mean? So it's all good. So why am I gonna get angry? Why am I gonna get frustrated? It's just be real, be honest, be calm, be selfless and be harmonious. And you won't have a problem. Simple. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you think people do get jealous and envious? Because they can't achieve. They cannot achieve. They can't achieve. How can they achieve sitting in a little box room? Scared to move. Can't go nowhere, can't do nothing, can't see no one. Why are you not gonna be angry? Of course you're gonna be angry. Like, there's loads of people out there that can't do anything out of fear, ego, circumstance, situations. Do you know what I mean? Everybody wants their ego to do everything, but people can't do what we do. That's why we're different. That's just life. You can't be the same as everybody else. You just gotta be the best version of you. And if you become the best version of you, then even you'll be amazing. And that's everybody included. Like, just be the best version of you and you'll be great, guaranteed caught of any negative energy, then you can't be great. Simple. So I'm getting positivity ingrained in me and everything I do. And why be angry, man? It's no point. So see when you everything shit hits the fan and you end up in the porter cabin, what are you thinking then? The universe has got a wicked game to show me, man. Like, what's going to come out of this? And what I've got to do, I've got to sacrifice. I said I can be skint. I said I can live with anything. Let's see. I'm not gonna to starve to death. I'm too proud to ring people up and ask for money. I'm too proud to be a ponce. So I mean, so I have to make it. Yeah, people know me, I ask sometimes, but I'm too proud to be a ponce. You're mad, isn't ya? Because you can assist me, but you can't put me on the map. That's my responsibility. I'm the man, do you get it? You can assist me and benefit, but I have to make my choices. I have to create my life, my destiny, my outcomes, not you. I can't do yours. You can't do mine. So I'm just happy making mine. See the life that you were in and the bad stuff that you've done, do you think karma plays a role when it Yeah, goes? yeah, of course he does, man. Of course he does. My eldest son, I've said it before, has been got a birthmark everywhere I've been shot. Every one of my other kids have got a single birthmark in the place I've been shot. The last investigation, Dean Murphy, I got arrested for, he got shot six times in his leg. Do you know what I mean? He has to have plates in his leg and all that sort of stuff. And basically, it's all karma, I got shot. I got shot five times, but six bullet holes. Imagine that. So it's all karma, everything is, I've, I've been, I've, I've, I was involved in a, in, with a case where a young kid, rest his soul, which was an absolute fucking liberty, got shot in the head. I was, not involved and I was disgusted at the act and I've sort of made it clear to the people involved that I want nothing more to do with them and I've done that. Um, I had nothing more to do with these scumbags that killed this young kid. But he got some in the nut and I believe that's why I got mine in the nut. So I mean like, there's other investigations where I've been shot, someone got shot in their testicles and I've been shot in my testicles. So I'm saying like, I've been stabbed in my heart, in my brain, I've been cut, stabbed, like, I've been through it. Like, and I've stabbed and I've cut plenty of people. So it's just karma. 
life is karma and you've got to be kind because it will come back to you. And that's one thing that I've sort of noticed or realized or come to acknowledge. Karma is you. You create your karma. So whatever happens is because of what you've done. Simple. It's not complicated. You've got to be accountable to say, wow, was I that much of a scumbag? Yes, I was. How was it being on that Bible and that as well and kind of all the interviews you've done there? Does that heighten everything even more so? It's all the same. It's all the same coping mechanisms. Do you know I mean? As long as you don't let it go to your head and you're not horrible to people. Do you know what I mean? Like, people are too scared to ask for photos, James. Do you know what I mean? They say, well, that's that Marvin, that's that Marvin. And I have, to, I have to actually stop. Yeah, but if you're walking about with that cup, mate, no, can't you just want a photo, no, no, mate? No, they do, they do, they do, they do. All the photos have got the cup in it. It's going to be trademark. It's going to be trademark. And I just look at people and I see them whispering. I said, do you recognise me? And they say, yeah. I said, do you want a photo? And they go, yeah, yeah, can I? And they take photos, yeah. Yeah, because I remember you were at the boxing, my event, and everybody was stopping you and moving down the crowd. And I can't mad. go nowhere without a picture. I'm stopped every day for a photo. Every day, it's nuts. But I'm glad it's for the right reason. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And it is for the right reason. It's for becoming this man of integrity and honesty that's got me the popularity. So it's only fitting to keep it moving in a positive way so we create insurmountable products for people to reach for. Do you think you've come over all the darkness and all the bad stuff in your life now? It's time to shine. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I think this is the year it's all going to happen. I think this is the penultimate turning point of growth. Do you know what I mean? We got the, the young Indian writer on board. Do you know what I mean? You come all the way over from India. Yeah? Oh, oh come on, my guy. Yeah, come on. That's what I'm saying. Because <laughs> no, he reached out to me from India and now we're writing books. Do you know what I'm saying? So, and because he comes from the middle class excellent of India, mm -hmm. yeah, then we will have the best network in what he wants to do. And because he was a crime reporter, in India, now he's plugged in in England. So now we've got the best of both worlds. And I'm in no rush. Everyone's asking, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? We're doing, oh, we're doing it in time. Relax. Because my books, The Lamb, The Lion, The Shepherd, that's the arc of my storyline. Yeah? And then um, three part book, three part series, three part movie. Bam. And it's going to get everything. Because everybody's in the yard, The Lion. Everybody's heard the lion. They ain't heard about the lamb or the shepherd. And I think the shepherd's even better because the shepherd done some dark things to get into the light. Do you know what I'm saying? So everything's a contributing factor to a, an explosive story tale all the way through, even to the point of now being legitimate. Like even going straight, I've been attacked, physically attacked. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. from people in the street, I've been attacked a couple of times, mate. I ain't just ones with that damn, um, can't remember his name now, but someone attacked me and bang, yeah. And then I've had a couple of altercations with the police. I've been arrested. Do you know what I'm saying? I got arrested for blackmail. It was a fit up. Imagine that. So there's things that have happened in this transition, but I've shone through. The only thing I got seven days, seven days um, contempt of court for abusing the judge. Yeah, so I called the judge a nonce and he gave me seven days, um, which fell on a Friday. So that had to release me. I had to do one day. Yeah, Where? In Pentonville. So I got arrested. I got the content on a Thursday. Yeah, he gave me seven days. So it runs into the week. So they have to give me the one day and let me out on the Friday. So I done one day in film in Pentonville. And that's when I realised Here's just something for you. So I've got seven days, yeah, um, contempt of court, calling the judge and I've gone into Pentonville. That's when I see insanity. That's when I see my insanity unfold when I was like, because we was at the top of the food chain in prison. You don't see, you don't see the, the trauma. And they're fucked in there. Like sad it is. So that even... I think that was needed to keep me on this journey of where I'm going and what I'm doing. Like that was needed seeing the lunatics in the asylum where I used to be the top of the food chain in there and I thought I was someone special. But they're all patients in prison. 
Like they're all patients. Mental institute. It is. It's all patients. Like the criminal fraternity is made up of mental patients. All of them. They're, like they're, you're criminally motivated because of your traumas. Everybody's traumatized, mate. Everybody. And I don't give a monkeys what anyone says to me. Get in front of me and tell me where you're not traumatized. And I can guarantee you've been traumatized. If you're in, if you're involved in crime, something bad has happened in your life. Facts. You don't commit crime for nothing. And I'll give you an example. I beat a, a, a beggar up on the street one day, and I'm really, I'm going to be honest because I'm an honest person. And I've, I've, now I feel disgusted that I'd done it when I was, I was about 20 odd years of age, right? So there was a young man, about 20 years of age, begging outside a nightclub one night. So I've said to him, I'll tell you what, mate, get up. Come here. I said, if you want to come and make some money, I'll give you a bit of graft or a bit of gear. You can get yourself some money. The geezer, rightly so, said to me, I don't want to be a criminal, you scumbag. And I was like, what? And this is the insanity. I actually beat the geezer up and stamped in his ribs. He, and I actually believed he was being cheeky. Do you know what I'm saying? He was nuts. So being so far removed from that personality, character and behaviour is why I'm so hell-bent on succeeding, because I wouldn't commit crime now by any means necessary. Like, there's no need to commit crime. And everyone wants to use excuses because they don't want to be or learn or create something better for themselves. And that's the reality. Like, you commit crime because you're lazy. When did you end up in jail again? Um, I think it was last year when you were <laughs> my son I don't even my, know that oh, yeah. so died. you've got plenty that's you've got plenty listen it's not giving excuses or free passes but it's understandable you could have totally let's call the judge a fucking nonce it's not the worst thing no. what did he what, what did you call him a sex case for um, I was winning the case as well and he got up and he he, he got up and retired so if he didn't walk out the door I would have been the case would have got thrown out but I was just thought, don't walk away from me. And then I forgot about the point of law that if he'd have left the court, I would have won the case. Because if you get, if you make a judge get up and leave the court, then it's an instant dismissal. They have to just throw the case, he's left the court. And he got up and walked out. And as he got to the door, I went, you fucking nonce. And he gave me the contempt court. And I was, you know, as I said it, I thought, you dickhead, should have kept my mouth shut. Why did you, why did you shoot I, that? Just, I don't know, it was just... Did you think you wanted to go to jail then? No, I, I, I didn't realise the legal turning point I was at. I didn't realise what he could have done. And he, that's what saved him from exiting, was giving me that contempt to call. Otherwise, you would have had to go, because I'm learning the, the I didn't even man. know you were back in. Yeah, done a day. Done a day. Do you think going through all your changes, you're, you're tested more? Or do you think the tests were always there, you just handled them differently? Yeah, I think just handled them differently. It's because everything is handled differently. Before I'll just smash your face in, stab you, shoot you, like I'll just weigh you in. Do you understand? Like mm -hmm. I, there was no in between with me. It was either on or not. It's either on or not. How is it? Like, and I know you've done loads of podcasts, and I know my name would have come up on loads of occasions, and everybody would tell you exactly the same fucking thing. Everybody, do you know what I mean? Like, no one will tell you anything different. Do you know what I mean? And he's a fucking lunatic. And boom, 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 here's, here's what he says on the tin, mate. Because no one, everyone knows me. I weren't trying to pretend to be someone. Is that the hard thing as well, Marv? Because you're, you're in your 50s as well. And see, when people try to change and try to do better, the people know there's not going to be a retaliation. People then try and push the boundaries even more. No, because they see that I can protect myself. In what sense? Punch me in my face or attack me. If you attack me, two or three people attack me, then I'm entitled to lash out. I'm entitled to fight back. Don't get it twisted. If someone attacks me to the point where I have to defend myself, I'm defending myself. I'm not gonna, I don't need to pick weapons up for people, but I can defend myself. The problem with this is, James, is this, right? Fortunately enough, the human species relies on energy. And people know when they come in my energy, yeah? It don't make sense fighting this cunt. Simple. And that's it. So people know who can fight. People know who can't fight. Now, I can fucking fight. Simple. I can fight. 
everybody knows I can fight. Every, no one, everyone knows what level of boxing I'll get up to, who I box, who I've sparred. Everyone knows I was in the boxing world and I've fucking sparred everybody that get in the ring. I'm thinking, fuck, how many world champions you got? How many world champion belts have you got? How many, I want to box, I want to see if I can compete with you. And I competed with everyone that I got in the ring with and they were world champions. Do you know what I'm saying? So I know I can have it. So I know my world has been made up because of my aggression, my violence, the criminal behavior and the criminal conduct. Now it's about using all that energy and transforming it into positivity. Because you can have the same outcome in a better way with positive stuff. It's just the positive stuff wasn't cool growing up. So now it's going to be cool. I'm going to make positivity cool. I'm going to be making healthy cool. I'm making vegan cool. Why wouldn't you want to be a vegan? Why would you want to eat poison? Like a cup of tea. You make a cup of tea. The best antioxidant on the planet. And then you put poison in it. Dairy. 49 hormones that, that creates hormones and cancer in the human body. 49, 49 hormones in dairy create cancer in humans. Fact. But yeah, you put it in a cup of tea every fucking day and then wonder why you're getting ill. Sugar, the biggest contributing factor to all human cancer. But yeah, you drink it every day, eat it every day. Every day. You go out and buy it off the, off the government. You go and buy a death every day and then blame the world for when you're ill. Eating bacon. Bacon is another one. That's another, that's human cannibalism. It's a genetic, human genetic. Do you know what I mean? That's a, all the animal kingdom is just genetically put together and your brain wants to believe that you need to eat it when you don't. You need to eat the, what grows from the ground and falls from the tree. That's it. And I'm living proof of that because that's all I do. And there ain't no one that can come and do my 26 hour circuit. If there is, come and see ya. Come and see me, 26 hours circuit. <laughs> no, so, I'm saying, like, so I'm doing it, I'm doing it for another 21 months or 20 months, I've done six already, yeah? So now there's 20 more to do, yeah? Now, if you're fit and you've got an engine and you can do circuits, come and get involved. See how long you can go for. And then you can tell everybody how I'm doing. So 26 hour circuit, what is that, what are you doing in that 26 right, hour circuit? Right, so it's a power clean, a power clean, Power clean front squat, power clean front press, power clean front squat and press, and then a high pull with the elbows high, right? And then you've got to do five burpees, five press ups, 25 sit ups, and a plank. And then back on the bar, power cleans, power cleans. When you get too tired, you can recover on the punch bag, but you can only do no more than three punch combinations, no less than two. So you can't just jab. You got an uppercut and hook, or straight right and hook, or that you got to double up your punches. Do you know what I mean? But it's got to be power to move the bag to recover. So you're recovering while you're moving. It's another level, James. It's another level because I'm. Where are you doing this? In any gym in the country, I've got. I'm. I'm. I'm doing. In July, we're doing Dale Youth. What's that? In West London. Do you know what I mean? And then we'll be going. I'm going up to. Um, Spencer McCracken's gym this month up in Birmingham and then next month it will be Dale Youth and then we'll just speak to people and do it well I think then we're going Newcastle then Edinburgh so I've got to go to Edinburgh to do the festival so we're going to do it in Edinburgh then do you know what I mean have you got a gym in Edinburgh I think we've got a boxing gym up there yeah, yeah. I can get you one All right, yeah, yeah but there's another thing all these things people don't realise right so I'm doing all this selfless act to drive inspiration and positivity, and it costs a fucking fortune. Like, people don't realize all this stuff and what it costs, you know what I'm saying? So, we're on the campaign now, we're growing, we're doing, we're sacrificing, we're going with that, and we are starving, literally. Like, so I've got into the intermittent fasting, so I fast 24 hours every day and eat once every day, and then every month I fast for five days. I mean, solid five days walk fast, and I'm two days in that. Mm. Feeling good? Yeah, and I go gym every day. When are you happiest, Marv? Accomplishments make me happy. So going to the gym this morning and doing my, I've never done the whole circuit, I'll just do a warm up. So I warm myself up so I can do a couple of sets with 40 kilos on the bar, with no food, and I'll get my warm up done, do the, 40, the few sets, and I'm happy. I'm happy, I'm happy, I'm happy. I'm gonna be happy 
that I'll get to eight o'clock tonight without eating. And then I'll I'll do tomorrow. I'm pretty sure I'm gonna do tomorrow. Do you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. I'm I'm allowed to eat tonight because I've fasted for 48 hours. So I've done more than I've done last week. So as long as I do more, and next time I fast, I've got to do, if I, only, if I eat tonight, then I have to do three times next week. I have to do three days next month or something like that. Do you know what I mean? So I always add to anything I've accomplished. Mm -hmm. And that's what keeps me happy, adding to my accomplishment. Have you done any therapy? Myself, so I've just done Never went and spoke to anyone? Do you think speaking on podcasts is a sense of therapy at times? It is, yeah, of course it is. No, it's venting, talking. This is like you won't need therapy unless you talk. If you don't talk, if you don't talk, you're gonna need therapy. Because it's just built up energy, circumstances, situations that you never get rid of. And they keep going round and 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 round forever. Why do you think so many people are battling with addiction, mental health? Because they're eating the wrong foods, living the wrong life, being the wrong people. And like, like, they're all confused. Because when you eat, that's to give your body nutrients, right? So you're eating three times a day for nothing. And the three times a day you are eating isn't giving your body the nutrients it needs. So your body's confused. Where's my nutrients? Where's my nutrients? So that's anxiety. Do you know what I mean? And then people don't realize why they're getting anxious because their body needs their fucking nutrients. You ain't giving it to me. Where is it? So it does things and does things and make you react. And then people don't, they keep eating medication going to the doctor, medication, mm -hmm. and then he's getting obese. The whole world's gone obese. Do you, think you've, do you think you've healed from a lot? I'm because obviously when you, back in the day, we spoke about your dad quite a lot, but you could never ever get through what you were saying. Have you healed from the pain you never the relationship see, with your dad? See, no, see, he's dead, isn't it? So it's, I'm glad that I buried him. I'm glad that we buried him in style. I'm glad he'll never look down and feel that we never give him a good send off. So, I mean, because irrespective of what my dad done, he was a great human being, caught up in a world of madness, and he had to learn how to do things his way. His whole family's middle class. His whole family are very wealthy. Like, the whole Herbert clan in Barbados are sick. The head of the Freemasons and all that sort of stuff. They were, like, they were big over there. I'm the outcast. My dad was the black sheep. And now they all turn their nose up at me because I was an insane lunatic. Do you understand? Like, my family are well-to-do. So... This transition now is going to be absolutely amazing when I actually go back to Barbados as a totally reformed, regenerated and reborn. Do you know what I mean? Like, my family's going to meet me, whereas prior, prior to my transition, they wouldn't want to meet me. Have you always felt like an outcast? Yeah. I've always wanted to be an outcast. You think it's safer? It was for me. It was for me. Do you know what I mean? Like, I had no ties, if that makes sense. Like, I was detached from everybody growing up in that criminal world. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't get me wrong. If you troubled my family, then I'd react. But no one ever did. When, um, Going through the transitions, going through all the changes, trying to be better, all the dark times, all the pain, even you're making good changes, the dark times are always there. How do you then find the balance of not cracking up, not fucking going mental, not going back to the old mouth? That is its power there. <laughs> no one can do what Marv does. Simple, so I've got to sit here until something else happens. I've got to sit here and wait for the opportunity. I ain't a mug. This is what the universe wants. What do you think life is? <laughs> life is life. What we're experiencing now, what we are experiencing now, is a spiritual imprisonment. Every human being is imprisoned spiritually into their human vehicle. And they have to learn in that vehicle how to become themselves. And that's the challenge. It's the game of life. That's why everybody has to go through the same things. Everybody has to experience the same things. And everybody has to make the right choices. How do you sleep, Marv? Comfortably. Sleep well now? Always have done. It's the thing I've always slept. Uh, I've always slept. However, prior to being shot, I had the sickest, vivid 
dreams, nightmares you could ever have, like of everything we've ever been through. Like I've spoke to dead people in my sleep. Do you know what I mean? Like literally, why? What are you doing? What the fuck? Like all the bullshit. Do you know what I mean? Like I've had all that, and it, it dissipated after I got shot. So I'm a little bit closer to what normality is because what people think is normal is madness. Do you think you're cursed? No, we're all cursed. Do you think so? Wow, Genesis 6, read it, it's in the Bible. Because of the wickedness of our hearts, plural, through the wickedness of the human homo sapiens heart, they're only, only given 120 years of life. That's the only reason we die, because we're wicked. And we've got to learn how to not be wicked to set ourselves free in the spiritual realm when we go back to our reality. This ain't reality, what we're living. This is all a test. It's all a test. It's all a test to teach. What do you think of religion? I, I don't. I don't think of it because I don't believe in it. I don't believe in it because it doesn't make sense. When you were lying short, did you pray to anybody? No, see, again, the, he talks to me. Who? The universe. Do you believe there's a higher power? There is a higher power. He speaks to me regularly and he told me, don't worry about that, mate. You're all right. You're all right. You're all right. Yeah. And then he told us what, this is what he told me, right? Like the doctors are telling me, oh, you're never going to walk. You're never going to walk. This is, and he said to me, listen, dickhead. Yeah. Stop taking the fucking morphine now and you'll be walking in two and a half years. I was like, shut up. He said, I'm fucking telling you, stop taking the morphine now and you'll be, on, you'll be walking in two and a half years. So I stopped taking morphine that day and I got booted out of the fucking hospital for it. Imagine that. Yeah? And they booted me out of the hospital. And then Shine and my boys, they made the RSO oil at the time. Yeah? There was um, a legal cannabis calf in Marbella and they made the Rick Simpson, well, what they call Rick Simpson oil, but these were the first people to make it and they made it for me in a tub and give it to me as a pain relief. And I had that as a pain relief in Spain and it worked. So I just had that in abundance. I still use it now. What do you think of the pharmaceutical industry? It's a load of nonsense. Pharmaceutical is the same as the food industry. It's all here to kill you, to poison you, for the aristocracy to benefit. They don't want mankind to benefit. It's just about their seven families. Yeah, greed, power, control infrastructure and the connection to the higher powers of extraterrestrials do you still hear voices oh everyone does everyone does is that it's, tapping into your sixth sense is that tapping into your it's not it's just reality see the people think uh, now this is another thing you'll be walking down the street in the middle of the night and sometimes you hear hello and you turn around and think oh, I heard that like everybody hears this shit everybody experiences this shit no one believes what it is what is that it's yourself talking to you because yourself is watching you. Like a simulator? Like yeah, a it's all that, man. I've, I've thought it. And I, why I say that is this, yeah? Now, there's a couple of my pals out there that have seen, been through some shit with me. So I'm going to get, have I told the story about the Ministry of Sand? No. When I had a car crash? Right. So this is how I know it's a simulation, right? So I'm in the Ministry of Sand. I'm taking ease like you couldn't imagine. Right, this was in 1991. Yeah, 1991. Yeah, so I'm about 18, 19. Yeah, I'm taking pills. Right, all of a sudden, I'm, 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 I used to take an obscene amount of pills. I might have took maybe 10, 12, 14 pills at this stage. Um, <laughs> and for some reason, it felt like the floor moved, right? So I've turned around to my pal, Jack and Linville. I said, did the floor just move, Lin? He went, what are you on about? I said, the floor, did it just move? He went, you're off your head in, yeah? I said, no, seriously, I felt like the floor just moved. He said, Marv, go and sit down, relax, man. Take, take your weight off, mate. You're off your head in, yeah? Fucking floor moved. Moving the ministry, mate. Do you know what I mean? And then Jack shot off to get some drink for whatever. He's got to get a drink. All of a sudden, it's happened again. And I thought, the fuck? The only thing I thought, I need to get to the hospital. Where's the car? So then, I'm not sure if I asked 
limbo for the keys or Joy had the keys and the bird was sitting in the car. So I've run out thinking I'm having an heart attack. So I've run out to the car. I've gone to Joy, move over. So I've threw Joy over. And if Joy's watching or anyone that knows Joy, young mixed race girl, get her to reach out to me because I haven't spoken to her since this night. It was crazy. Yeah, I've never spoken to her since this night. So if you reach out, reach out to Mr. Marvin Herbert, social media, because I need to speak to you, darling, because I owe you a great apology. Anyway, basically, I've run out of the club, threw her from the driver's seat into the passenger seat. So I've jumped behind the steering wheel and I'm driving towards St. Thomas Hospital in, in um, South London, around the corner from the ministry. I'm flying on the road. I've gone round and round about. I'm coming up St. John Street. My foot's going to the mill. I'm down. I'm doing about 70, 80 miles an hour. All of a sudden, I'm in the passenger seat looking at what I believe to be an Indian. So I naturally assumed when I've looked over that Jack's driving the car. So I've tried to pull the handbrake up. The handbrake ain't coming up. I've looked up and I've seen the bus stop coming towards us. So I've braced for impact. As we've hit the bus stop, yeah, because there's a geezer. I remember the geezer looking at me and then the bus stop, it's hit the bus stop. It's gone on the bus stop. Now I'm outside the car looking at Jack over the steering wheel and the bird up against the window. So I said to myself, fuck me, Jack's fucked because I looked Indian, right? So I've looked, I thought, Jack's fucked, I'm getting out of here. So I've turned around and started running up St. John Street, checked my pockets for me bits and pieces, and I thought, sweet. All of a sudden, as I got to the junction, everything just went two-dimensional. Black and white, two-dimensional, and I thought, what the fuck is that all about? And I've looked that way, and I've looked that way, and it just looked weird. And then I said to myself, fuck this, I'm going back. And as I turned around, I woke up in the car. So I've said to Joy, where's Jack? He said, what are you on about? I said, Jack was just driving his fucking car. Where's Jack? Fast forward. I've been nicked. Yeah. <laughs> so I've, I've, Joy's come to me, Marv, 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 you just crashed the car. You better go, you better go, you better go. I said, what are you on about? She said, Marv, there's a geezer under the car. There was a geezer on the bus stop. So I said, what? And there's a geezer, huh? Wedged underneath the car, and he's got pins in his legs. And everything. So I really apologise for that guy as well on St John Street when I crashed the car and the bus stop. The car went onto the bus stop and crashed the bus stop onto the geezer. And I'm that buzzing, yeah. That when I've got out of the car and I've run, yeah, I'm running up the street, but everyone on the bus has give chase, yeah. But I'm that buzzing. I forgot about the crash, yeah. This is why I'm smiling because I forgot about the crash. And I'm walking down the street. I'm turning my head, yeah. And there's about forty people, hey, hey, hey. and they got. I was like, what the fuck? So I started jogging, yeah. And then, and then it got bigger and bigger. The crowd was getting bigger and bigger because obviously they've seen what I've just done to this kids with a bus stop. So they all followed me to get me, to nick me, yeah? But I didn't know what they were following me for. I was like, I'll run out of the road, I'll tell you, I'll, I'll shit you not. I've seen all these people, what the fuck? And I thought, I ain't got a tool on me. I ain't got nothing on me, I'm gonna get fucked here. And as I've turned around, across the road on the lights, there was a police car. <laughs> So I just ran up to the police car, yeah. I said, I ain't got a fucking clue what these people were chasing me for, mate. I said, but there's going to be a problem here, you know, because I didn't know what they were screaming at. I didn't know what everyone was screaming at because I was that buzzing, do you know what I mean? Anyway, they've, they've nicked me, took me to the police station, gone in the police station, and I said, look, let me tell you something now. Yeah, I said, I ain't a grass for no one's cunt. I said, but I'm telling you now, the person that was driving that car is coming back to the police station tomorrow with me. I, was, oh, I can't tell you who it was, but my pal was driving that car and I'm going to bring him back for you. So they bailed me, yeah, to come back to the police station. I've gone home thinking, what a liberty. How have them not done this to me? Next thing, Jack and Limbo have knocked on my door. My person me car. I said, Jack, you better tell him where the car is, mate. So I was like, what? Tell him where the car is. I'll see you in the car, Jack. Tell him where the car is. So Linville kindly said to me, Marv, Marv, mate, I love you. He said, me and Jack was in the ministry. You told me the floor was moving and then you run out of the gaff like a bat out of hell, mate. Jack stayed with me till seven in the morning. When we come outside at seven in the morning, fucking freezing, my car's gone with my keys in the boot, my jacket in the boot, everything in the boot. So I don't know how you think that Jack was driving the car that you took. But Jack's been with me all night. 
And I thought, nah, nah. I see Jack in the car. I see Jack in the car. And I sort of fell out with him. I've only just seen Jack two weeks ago since that day. Because I actually believed they set me up. And I had to go back to the police station, offer myself up, got nicked. And then basically they got the keys back and all the bits and pieces for the car. But I had a proper out of body experience to the point where I actually believed Jack was driving that car. But now with hindsight, I've looked back. I remember running up the road, seeing all the two dimensional shit. And there was no wind. There was no air. And I thought, this is weird. I'm going back. And I remember when I turned, man, that's when I woke up in the car looking for Jack. But I see myself. And a lot of people said, someone said I look Eritrean. Some people say I look Mexican. Some people say I look Indian. Some people say I look Jamaican. I, I look... Try and like, look all sorts of different things depending on how angry I am. So, yeah. But that's drugs as well, isn't it? Especially if you're on the fucking Ekkies. Mm. You'd have been tripping balls. What do you think of the prison system? It's just a get out. It's not a system, it's just incarceration for incarceration, taking it for the government to make money. That's all it is. And the money the government make money out of every person that goes to prison. It's just a carousel from people referral units, which is the alternative school, to prison. And then they get money out of them because everybody's dead anyway. What do you think of the schooling system? It's fucked. Treating everybody out to be robots. To for the for the for the families again, isn't it? It's all it's all for the infrastructure of society. I think it was Rockefeller who started the schooling system. Yeah, yeah. And he was saying it just wants to create workers. That's all it is. It's all workers. That's why I create companies. I'm creating companies. That's why I'm creating companies. And that's it. And I'm at five percent of every company I add value to. What do you think of was? Who? Wars. Wars, Ukraine, Russia, Palestine. Oh, I thought you were talking about my cousin, because that's what I called my cousin. I thought, what the fuck? <laughs> wars. Yeah, he's good. Um, well, wars is... A, a, right, so... <laughs> I'm going to be a little bit controversial now, because I believe I can be. Now, I don't know if you was aware of this. However, someone said to me, have I got an issue with my race and all that? I said, no, 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 no. I've been brainwashed into believing white are white and black are black and Great Britain is Great Britain and United Kingdom, United Kingdom. But do you know why it's called the United Kingdom? Right, because before the Crusaders, who was killing and pillaging people to make them believe in Christianity, before they came here, everybody here was a Muslim, a black Muslim that came here as the United Kingdom because the United Kingdoms united because of the Crusaders outside of England, right? Great Britain, right? So Sintimius Aurelius, I think it might be, or Sintimius Aeus or something like that. Sintimius was the first black Roman emperor in this country that built the city of London, the roads, all the roads up to Edinburgh, all that, he was black. The queen, Jesus, all this sort of stuff was black, right? So. I've learned that every European country ate raw meat until it went Africa. No European country had a monarchy until they stole the golden stool concept from Ghana. The, Jew, the, the Greeks stole the alphabet from Egypt. They were supposed to study for 20 years and they only studied for five years, the mystic ways of Egypt, and they run off with the alphabet and then said they'd done it. So I mean, like everyone in Europe has stole something from Africa and claimed it as theirs. And now the truths are coming out, the reality is coming out. And all I could say to people is be the best version of a human being you can be, because this myth they had about menelin is a nonsense. About white people ain't got no menelin. Of course they have. That's what a scab's made of, menelin. That's what a suntan does, creates menelin. Do you know what I mean? It's about understanding the fact that we are spiritual beings living how to live in a material vessel. Yeah, we're all very spiritual beings, but everything's backwards since we're born, man. Even we're taught to wear sunscreen and sunglasses. It's all, it's all programming. It's, they say sun causes cancer, sun prevents cancer. Yeah. If you actually look into it and look at the facts and the details. Looking directly at the sun opens sun your pineal gland. gland. Yeah, 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 yeah. Activates the pineal gland. Yeah. All that sort of stuff. So our sun guys every time it's out. Green in the morning. Yeah, you know, people can call it all hippie shit, but... This is what I'm all about, is the grounding, tree hugging. I know people, I don't really do the tree hugging, but I do ground. No, I will go out in the garden. So 
the tree hugging, yeah, actually gives you energy. energy. Yeah. Yeah. People don't get it because it's all natural energy, what we're supposed to be connected Electrons to. Electrons from right. the earth. And what they've got you programmed to believe in is putting your foot into a shoe that connects you to nothing so they can con contaminate your brain and your heart and just keep you focused on nothing. And bring your vibration down. Yeah, you've got to get in high vibration. So I walk on Primrose Hill every day and what I do, I walk my dogs to the top and I take my shoes off and walk to the bottom and then walk off. So I mean, but I grind every day. I fast every day, and now I'm fasting for a week. What about afterlife? There ain't no afterlife. It's just life. You don't die. It's impossible to die. Energy. You don't die. We're living out of live in this spiritual form in this vessel, but we don't die. You wake up when you go through the death process. You wake up and think, what the f do you think this is a dream? No, it's a simulation for you to learn. Like an avatar? For you to learn. They give you all the information because they have to. And the information is through movies. And that's why they make these movies. So they can say, when you wake up, we told, we were telling you, man. We were telling you. And you're like, shit, but then you've got to come back and do it again. Avatar, Total Recall. Uh, all of it. Truman Show. Um, Matrix. Yeah, all of the Matrix is the reality, is our reality. Because light is only, that's why they say the angels. It's not angels, it's angles. The angles came down. See, this is a lot of things that people are not really paying attention to. It's the angles that come down that made you see certain things. It's not angels. Have you ever seen Interstellar? What's that? Interstellar, watch that. Uh, Matthew McConaughey. Oh, it's about different dimensions. Yeah, text it to me. Yeah, well, well, he, he goes to outer space, comes back, mind blown. Yeah, see, what people don't realise is, I don't think there is space, me personally. I think it's water. Because if you look at the sky now over night time, it's kind of blue. It's not dark no more. Look up mm -hmm. in the night and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's not black, dark. But look at the control of the cloud seeding in Dubai. It's all came out now. So there's people think we're living in a dome. We are. Like a dome. We are. Um, the Earth's flat. The Earth's yeah, flat. Possibly. They say there's ice around the Earth. Again, yep. I don't know because I've never seen it. I can only read and watch mate, videos and then take my up, perception of it. Make it up. Make it up. Make it up. Hey, you want to make However, there's a reason why we're not allowed to go up into Antarctica. There's only one reason why there's a... But ain't it mad how the sunlight is down here, the heat, but the more we travel up, the sea, it gets colder. It's just altitude. Yeah. Right now. But it gets darker. When exactly. you go out of space, it's dark. Why? No, but it's not. There's one yeah, I know, but this is what I'm saying. You've got a question. They want, you, they want you to believe that. They want you to believe that, but if there's no obstacle in front of the sun, it's daylight, bruv. Time doesn't exist. Time's created for man. For harvest there's 13 months of this year yeah 13 is about a powerful number 13 months of this year every year is 30 months but they, they changed they, that yeah they, no, they, even if you've done the ads if you added up the days it don't add up it's to do with the moon the cycle of the moon 28 days but they started giving months 30 days 31 so we got 12 months but yeah. each year should be 13 months and i months. think new year should be the first of april apparently yeah, the new it's year it's all to do with the moon yeah but all that stuff it might sound weird especially us two sitting here but is to take it on a journey and show people a different kind of things. What we've learned, what we've chose to speak about. We're not sitting here angry and shouting at people. And everybody. We can talk shit about people. It's about the healing, yeah. the journey, and where we've been. And I, that's what I was saying to you. Every time we come on, it's going to be a different projection of energy because of where we are and where we're going. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's each step of the journey. Because I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fail. I'm not going to fail. And if there's a chance for me to be within the realms of parliament, then I will be there. But I can guarantee you, James, that I will be walking into Buckingham Palace or something of that magnitude. Like, I will be getting some sort of knighthood, MBE, OBE, all that, sort of, all that sort of stuff, because we are going to make that much of a drastic change. It will be hard for them not to do it. Do you know what I mean? Like, for anybody that's in the struggle, Marv, what advice would you have for them? who's battling, you know what it's like to battle. Just give up all the ne negative stuff, anything negative that harms you, anything negative that pollutes you, anything that causes issues, just get rid of it. Just take it all away and live on your own, be on your own, go without. Do you know what I mean? The universe has got a plan for everybody and it just wants you to have faith in it. So have faith in the universe and speak to the universe. Everyone would think you're mad, but you can sit and come and just sit and close your eyes and talk, what is it we can do? 
And then it's like your ideas, right? Where do you get your fucking ideas from? I mean, they just comes. But people run away with ideas, but they don't want to talk to the, the universe. That's you. Just speak to yourself, and you'll find out what it is you want to do, and be honest. And when you say, oh, "I can't fucking do that," that is what you're supposed to be doing. It's your limbic system telling you you can't do it. So just do what you know you can do. That's why I let people punch me and kick me because I know no one can trouble me. It ain't going to bother me, so I let them do it. I know my limits. I know where I can and where I can't go. Are you scared of death, Muff? I don't die. No one dies. No one dies. You, you're made to believe you die. You can't die. This form dies. This Vessel? Yeah, this vessel's finished. You've got 120 years of this vessel. Then you wake up into the reality of you. Some of those countries people live to 160. No cancer, cancer free. Some of the other countries that just live on fish and some people were saying about drinking water could be bad for you. That's why you get your water from grapes and pineapple. Well, water doesn't hydrate you. That's what people were confused about. Everyone thinks water hydrates you when it doesn't. Water is the vessel to get your electrolytes around your body, the signals, the messages around your body. The only thing that hydrates you is fruit and veg. Facts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been reading all that stuff as well, and it might yeah. sound crazy to people who don't understand it. And that's down to them, but it's just to question everything. How are you feeling today? Hungry. You hungry, brother? Yeah, but I've got to go and have a day now. It's a different podcast. Yeah, it's all, what is it? It's, it's, it's different information for the viewers, but my reality, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So I can only be real, I can only be me, and I can only continue to do what I do. How can people back you, Marv? How can people get involved in your stuff that you're trying to do? Um, just contact us and if we can add value to what you're doing and you can add value to what we're doing then we can build something together it's just about building because Liverpool I know they're doing weapons down gloves up man which is a great thing you'll see big Tony Bell you uh, Billy kind of meatball um, they're doing a great thing up there as well yeah well HMP is going to be doing something in his own magnitude soon and it's about guns knives and crime do you think London's at its worst? I don't know it's ever been. I think the see. I don't. I think the whole country is at its worst. The whole planet is at its worst. There's nowhere specific to the badness. It's all gone crazy, isn't it? Because they're playing with everybody. Yeah, but they've got everybody. You seen how fast the world was locked down, mm. and they're still now talking about everybody needs to go and go to war, fight for war. I believe there's going to be a world war free. I believe the people are so dumbed down, and people do. That's the why we're here, James. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here, mate. Yeah, it's crazy. They're going to need, look, when all this is over in another five years, they're going to need people like us to pick, pick up the mess and the logical mind of development. Because they have all these clans in this, on, even on this platform, like, look, now I can honestly say that prior to mine and your podcast, the first one, that, the platform never went anywhere where, where it's gone now. Like, so much has happened in the demographics of that channel, like that platform. Like, the amount of people who have took on the platform, like, people just try to mimic the pair of us. Isn't they? That's how I see the social media platform now. Everyone just mimic Marvin and James. That's all they've all tried to do. Do you know what I mean? And everybody try to mimic you in being who you're saying, but no one can mimic me because no one's done what I've done. Do you know what I mean? So that's why I'll always have them views because I'm not here trying to pretend to be someone. I'm being me. You've had your own traumas, you've had your own issues, you've had your own turbulence, and you're still being you. So this is what we're demonstrating to people. Yeah, you weren't an hard nut gangster, gunman, shooting man. Like you even openly confessed to being like the jokerish kind of person, always running jokes, always having a laugh and a giggle, always making everyone laugh, right? Mm -hmm. So you wasn't part of the turbulence, the aggression. Do you know what I mean? And that led into your own little dark holes, but now. We're being better people, doing better things for a better outcome. So that's what people will get jealous about because they're not capable of doing that. They're not. That's why they're angry. So let them be angry at them. They're not angry at you. They're angry at them. And the only way they can let the world know they're angry is by having a guy at you or me. So let them do it. Yeah, we're not asked. Like I say, anybody who's struggling out there, I'll send them love and tell them. Yeah, love it's all about love, man. It's all about love, cuddles and hugs, man. Come and sit down and see what we can create. This is what I was saying. From from now, from then to now to then, let's see what we can create. We can create 
Unbelievable shit, mate. To help change narratives. Don't need to be in a bubble. Don't need to be in a zone. Just do it all together. Everybody comes together quicker, the better we have a better result. And that's how I see life. Where do you go forward for the future, Marv? What's the big plans? Can you reveal them or is it all action? Books, series, movies, plays, Edinburgh Festival. Boom. And people can get your tickets. So I'll leave the link in the description for people going support Marv in Edinburgh. Like I say, brother, four or five years journey we've been here. Um, this is the fourth podcast. More to come. More to come as yeah, always. Come on, um, you know, I'll always be fucking supporting from the background. Um, we don't the, see the, each the other. movie premiere yeah, soon. I'll be there, mate, with the tux on. Come on. Um, I wish you nothing but the best for the always. future, Marv. Come on, always. Keep always, shining, always. brother. Andrew. Keep doing what you're Andrew. doing. Andrew. And uh, you know I'm always here if you need me. Lovely, lovely. Would you like to lovely. finish up on anything else, bro? Um, just like to let anybody know that everything in life that we go through is meant for you to go through because unfortunately you have made the choices you've made to put you where you are then now here you so you can you can actually accept who you've been and what you've done and become a better person by helping those less fortunate than yourself and get rid of your ego my advice for everybody is let go of your ego who are HMP forever. <laughs> See you soon, Marv. Yeah, come on. <laughs>